we are back in a new situation here with my grinder and obviously whatever this is I was trying to like I just spent like 10 minutes trying to figure out how to not show both cameras in the thing and it just was not going to happen I have our pieces that we will be grinding in my hand right here and we're going to start with what I call the big grind. So this is my, I should get this, If it, let me get this out of the way. There we go. Scooch that down. This is my dual arbor add a unit grinder. Don't email me about where you can buy it because they don't make them anymore. Maybe you can buy one used. I've got a little water system. I should have probably put some fresh water in there, but I think it'll be okay. And we're going to start with the big grind on this left, this is a diamond grit sanding wheel, and it is 320, 320 grit. And then I just have some miscellaneous whatever. I'm just gonna do the edges on that. So this is, I don't know, 600 grit nonsense paper. It doesn't matter. I mean, it matters, but it doesn't really. So, but we're this is what we're really working on first, but I'm just gonna zip the sides on this after I do that. So let us just get started and let me put the camera back and I'm going to switch to this oh beautiful view yes I've had this grinder for a long time I'm trying to get a good spot there we go and is it worth doing something like this there we go, whatever. You can see my bald spot in the back of my head. So it is what it is, you get old, that happens. Oh, uh, but also two things before we get started. I always wear my mask. I know I've been really lackadaisical about wearing a, breast, a, a particulate mask, but you absolutely need to do that for this. There we go, glasses, this. And then I also put this little thing on because the water goes straight down my neck and I don't like that. So I put on a little bib. It's so classy. You have to like not care what people think. There we go. Perfect. I love it. So yeah, let us, let's see if we can get a little closer in here. Maybe. Let's see if you, eh, whatever, if you can see what's going on. Maybe you can, maybe you can't, whatever. We'll fool around with it later. So now we're ready to do it. Um, I am gonna scooch over so I can see what's happening. There we go. Let's see how wet everything is gonna get. All right, I'm turning it on, it might be kinda loud. I also cannot see any comments. So uh, if you're watching, good. If no one's watching, that's fine too. So, gonna get the water going. Let's see Ooh. how wet my phone is gonna get. And we'll start with this one. Remember, we've got, gonna start with the end. Yeah. Let's just do this one. Yeah, nobody needs to see the back of my head. Let's see. All right, now we're gonna start the front. Get that. 
over a little bit. That's fine. That one's good. Let's get cracking with these little guys. Because, of course. Another one. Let's get these little guys, these little pink ones. Yeah, I've got nothing interesting to really say about this, except you can really easily overdo it. So I'm doing a little bit and checking. And I feel like I'm about to run out of water, which sucks. I should have. That was the one thing I forgot to do is put water in the jug. Maybe we'll have enough. Looks good. Got just four more. And then we'll be ready to move on to the next step.
one more of those. 11 minutes. All right, two more, these little guys. I wonder if we can zoom in a little bit. Oh, no. No. Not. Oop, wrong way, that's beautiful. There we go, whatever. I'm running out of water. Give it to me. One more. good. Alright, now we're going to pop over here. There we go. Just to do the edges. There we go. This is just for the edges. Because don't think for a minute we're at all close to being done with these. There's eight more steps. There's the edge. Let me get that. Let me do them in pairs so I can...
bit more water, please. There we go. That's good. Let's do these little guys. Ow. Oh, now the water's pouring out. There we go. It's going to be too wet. Remind me before we come back here to do our final polish that I need to put more water in the jug. more and then we get to go back to the workstation Now we have all the water in the world. Good enough for that one, seriously. One more, one more. And this one's taking a little bit more because I didn't do the edges of this, this pair as neatly as I did all the other ones. You remember, these are the ones that we made from scratch a mere three days ago, two days ago. good all right let me turn the water no, as if whatever's left is going to come through there we go so we have done the big grind see we've got those we've got this little guy is ready to go this is the first made that we've removed all of well we're not totally done removing material but we're getting closer. We've done all that we can for right now using this grinder and we're going to migrate back to my regular workbench and we're going to finish these up. Well, we're not gonna finish these up there. We're going to do the next step there. So hold on a moment. Now, let us move. We're going to move this camera first. So let's just go for a little ride over here. I can see it dripping. Let us come. And you can see I have sort of started to set up 
the grinding station over here, but then I ran out of time. So it is going to be what it is. And I don't think we need the extra light. So I can just hang out. We don't need to stare. There we go. There we go. We're not quite set up. I'm going to go get the other camera and then I'll be right back. Yes, so. Now, let's just go over here. I know. And look, I can take my bib off. I'll be putting it back on when we get to the pumice powder. So there we go. We are back in our little area. And I've put up a little thing to kind of keep the dust down. And let's go ahead and do this. There we go. So I'm going to put down a nice tea towel or two. A oh, hello. Thank you for everybody that came back. There we go. We've got this. Oh, and it's still the same. Interesting. It's still, I guess, technically the same stream because I still see, I don't know the, what's going on. I feel like an old lady. So uh, we got some tea towels. Let me get some water would be a good, a good thing to have. I would say a small thing of water would be nice. Let's grab. It doesn't have to be distilled. It's just what I have right here. And to be honest, the water from the faucets at the studio today is looking decidedly yellow. So I don't want to drink that stuff anyway. We've got water, we've got this. Let me get my sanding stick. And let's see. This is a live broadcast. It is indeed a live broadcast. Um, I assume it, you can tell the difference. I don't even know. Um, oh, paper towels, paper towels. Oh, and first time chatter, married with spawn. Welcome. Can I call you married? Married? I probably need more paper towels than that, but that's fine. So let's just see where we have our pieces. Probably want to rinse them off a little bit. There we go. We've got, oh, it's warm. Feels warm. There we go. So. We have our pieces and we've done our big grind and polish. Trish has listed them as reruns. Huh, well, no, literally no idea. Um, I don't even quite understand, even when it's live. Hmm. Well, what you gonna do? Probably some setting that I, I don't know, whatever. Um, maybe it doesn't, you know, I'm not even gonna think about it. So we've got our pieces and we're going to move forward with them. The next thing that I'm going to do is, I actually don't need this pizza paper towel, I'm just kind of drying them off. We are going to, that was a nice idea. We have this lovely, sanding strip standing diamond sanding stick if you want to buy one of these i sell them on my etsy store i use this every single not every single day because i'm not always grinding and polishing but almost every single day and you can see that i mean you can't necessarily see but i can certainly feel that the grinding that i just did because i it's so easy to go 
too much on that other big grinder. It's a little bit lumpy, it's a little faceted, and I'm gonna smooth all that out with this. And you can also, I don't think I'm gonna need to, but you could also use a, I have that same thing on my around disc. So if you don't have a big grinder, you could do all of your grinding. That thing that I just did on the big grinder, you could do with one of these diamond sanding discs as well. They're very, very handy. It fits in your Fordham, and I use this a lot. So, and if I needed to do a little bit more finessing, I can see, you know, I can see I need to remove a little bit of glass. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now. So, Let's, let's just use it temporarily. And I do also send, I also sell a grinding and polishing kit on my, on my Etsy store. Um, so you could buy that as well. Um, so I'm just gonna, remember you dip, use a lot of water to keeps the dust down. And let's just see, I'm just removing where the glass is. It's just gonna take a second. Good. Let's see if there's any glass on any of these others. Yep. These all look good. Ah, oh, these need a little. That looks good. Needs a little. Good. Let's look at these guys. Good. That's good. is good now I've removed all the glass from the silver bits and now I just need to smooth it out and I get this going oh yes thank you married with small <laughs> I like that name all right so we've got that I'm gonna scooch over because I use the edge of my table right here for the next step gonna just move that and the next step is I'm going to try to because I close my eyes and it feels lumpy gumpy so I'm going to smooth it out using my diamond sanding stick I'm gonna put a little water right here there we go just so it sticks to the table and I'm used doing I'm supporting the piece with my fingers and I'm just going to do I want this stick let me get the other stick see what these stick options are. I feel like I like this thinner handles a little better for my... There we go.
then if you want to see where you are and get some paper towel, dry paper towel. And dry it off. And what I'm looking for is no shiny bits. I see I've got a little bit of work over here that I want to, oops, sorry, wrong thing. Um, See how it's nice and matte finish, except for in this little area. So I'm going to really focus on getting this, these little divots out. Just, that's good. There we go, but that did it. One more little. There we go. So that one is nice and, and we'll deal with all of this later. So that's good for now. And it's good to keep your, keep cleaning that off. And we'll do the Laurel, Laura's, Laura's earrings, then she's gonna win. And this one is, oops. you really do need to support it with your fingers because you could snap this or crack it so I'm putting a lot of pressure on these pieces I'm using elbow grease so but that means I'm supporting it with my fingers um, I never sit here and do this this is just you'll waste everybody's time mostly your own time so that's looking good set you over there Oh, I need to turn the kiln on because these are going to get a fire polish and then beyond the fire. I call it beyond the fire polish. Um, I liked Mary Lee Ray. She's a phenomenal enamel artist. She once said that a good fire polish is better than a bad pumice job. Not pumice job, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with stopping at a fire polish especially when you're first beginning a fire polish is a perfectly acceptable and wonderful finish uh, but I am going to take these a little bit beyond that because you'll see why that's feeling if I close my eyes it feels like a kind of like a river rock so there we go I'm gonna get these little guys got this let me wipe this down Keep things nice and tidy. I actually really like grinding and polishing. I find it very soothing and it's exciting to kind of see. I used to be really nervous about grinding and polishing because I didn't want to you know, honestly fuck it up after all those hundreds of hours. You know, this is, oh, you could, you can, you can F it up. You can absolutely over grind and go straight through all your layers of color. I've done it. It's a lot harder to do with the hand tool, but on the main, on a, whenever you're using a tool that has more power than you can do with your hands, you gotta have a light touch, but, and you have to have a sense, because remember, what are we working with? 0.812 millimeters of depth. So that's not a lot of depth. So you have to know the limits of the medium but you can't be afraid you gotta take it to the correct amount that is looking good sorry about that all right let me scooch over oops it's that the you know what i'm just going to let's solo this let me get my stupid mug out of the way and see what's going on there we go these little ones i know i usually wrap my finger in something protective because i always give myself a little cut but i didn't think to do it so maybe when we get to the next step we'll wrap my finger but then there we go. So it feels really, 
look how it glows look at that pink it's gonna be beautiful now we got our little pink guys that's good and these are a little just using my fingers smooth them out they're looking really pretty that pink this one had a little bit of oranginess right in the tip doesn't bother me it just makes it look a little bit more peachy so the two that end up being and we're going to put these back in the kiln so theoretically one more could go if, if another one goes a little orangey that will be a match set <laughs> so uh, that is just the way of the way of the pink and yeah because they were all in the same exact time maybe the just the position in the kiln who knows why that one went a little yellow or or we'll call it peach peach so oh i guess i don't need to have that sorry i forgot that i had left that on i need an i need an editor like a live editor to do all this stuff does anyone want to apply for the job it doesn't pay anything <laughs> There we go. Got to get this. There we go. Looking good. That one's good. Did I do this one already? No. These don't take as much. There we go. One more. They're like poker chips. And pretty much after this is this step is pretty much the last glass that I'm going to be removing after that we're just focusing on the silver because remember we're going to melt the glass in the kiln so I'm not worried it just needs to be nice and smooth so that is nice and smooth definitely wipe down your tools because if this dries all that dust is going to end up everywhere because remember um, this is all leaded enamel, so it's a leaded dust. So you should technically be probably be wearing a respirator for this stuff, but I use a lot of water. Um, but definitely when you're doing the big grind, absolutely. So that is, that step is over. So we can thank our diamond grit sanding stick. Thank you very much. Also give a good hearty shout out to our diamond grit sanding disc because we are done with you and the next step we are going to put remember from i don't know from three days ago these other sanding discs i use these sanding discs all the time and there are as many different ways to finish your enamels as there are enamel artists and it doesn't matter there's no correct way the correct way is the way that gets you the results that you want that works for you on an emotional physical it, it works with the equipment that you have you could use you know remember the old timey alundum alundum stones i don't even know um but we're using a little extra technology so i swear by these sanding discs and we are going to be using two varieties 60 micron we're going to start off with brown and then we're going to move along to oh sorry 40 microns which is blue and we're really focusing on see all of these oops, see all of these scratches that we've just put in the silver we're going to start taking those out so how long have i been working in enamel probably let's see i did my first show to in ACC Atlanta back when ACC American Craft Council had a show in Atlanta I did the 2008 show that was my very first show so I'm gonna say 2006 I don't know 100 years that's probably right so let us put let me, let me do this off camera for some reason Now, I think I'm going to, honestly, let's, 
Let's move this over here. There we go, done. Let's try this. Boop, boop. See, look, I'm over, I'm over on the left side now. <laughs> did you see how fast I did that? Now, let's just continue along. Let me move this up a little bit because we're done. We're not using the edge anymore. We're gonna come back to the edge. And so just remember, keep use a lot of water. You don't want to grind any dirt into these soft, beautiful, and porous enamels. I am definitely, and I do a little, I'm doing this for the wires. Just a gentle touch over the wire work. And then I'm going to go a little bit harder on the silver. And I have to rearrange because I literally cannot see. There we go. Let's, there we go. Do this, wait. All right, that's good. Now I can see. Jam my finger in there. Other than cost, is there a reason why enamel is done on silver versus? Oh, you could enamel on gold. It's beautiful. Um, well. Gold also brings in its own color. You know, to be honest, blues and greens do not look good over gold because the gold is just the wrong color. Um, you can enamel on copper, you can enamel on brass, you can enamel on somebody was, in, I don't even know. As long as you can get the correct enamels, you can enamel on, you cannot enamel on platinum as far as I'm aware of. But yes, you can absolutely enamel on different, you need the correct kind of gold. Uh, Green golds, I think, are better. 24 karat gold. 22 karat. I, I don't do a lot because I just don't have the money. So, but if I, I was fully planning on winning that eight one $1 billion lottery the other day, I did not. And if I had won it, I was going to entirely only ever enamel on 24 karat gold for the rest of my life. And it would have been ridiculous. Everything would have probably just bent. All right, what time is it? 3.15. And this is one of those things that you, it just takes as long as it takes because we're going to try to take out... I should have probably told my husband that I'm going to be home late. This is... There we go. It's looking good. Oh yeah, platinum has a weird high melting temperature. Um, titanium is also another thing that I don't think you can enamel on as well. And honestly, every time I say something like that, somebody is like, oh, you can totally blah, blah, blah. Um, I told, you know, I, it's not easy or ubiquitous. How's that? Not that you can't do it. Somebody, and I haven't replied on my YouTube channel, was like, can you fuse copper? And I'm like, maybe? It would be very difficult. But you know what? Scientifically, I bet you can fuse copper. I just don't know how to do it. And, you know, I'm having a thought that just to get things finished i might how do you guys feel about finishing one to two pieces and then just so we can finish it'll be a lot quicker we're gonna work on i'm gonna honestly i'm really attracted to this i think we're going to at this point let's finish these and these pink things they'll be beautiful i promise to take you can see what they're gonna look like there we go. They're going to look like that and they're going to be lovely. And I promise to take a photo of them just to kind of move things along because we got a lot of steps to do. So that's, I just made a decision there. And now we'll finish those tomorrow. I've already decided. So 
because somebody's making my husband's making burgers for dinner tonight <laughs> so boigas Just getting a fresh one of these. So yes. And we might abandon this one. We'll see. And I'm not going to lie, I actually usually use my microscope for this as well because it's nice to be able to see the tiniest little bits that you need to deal with. But it's too much to have to, you know, bring the microscope. There we go. All right, so that's good. And we're going to just switch up to the 40 micron grit oh and i'm going to turn the kiln on now's a good time to turn the kiln on gonna go do that you enjoy looking at these while i do that that shouldn't take too long and it only draws at like 400 degrees so, oh yeah, I mean, I just can't see anything. And once you get used to it, I, was, I went to the eye doctor the other day and we were just waxing poetic about, cause she had a microscope I have. And she was like, oh, do you have like the dual um, focus one so you can adjust each eye? And I'm like, oh yes. And she's like, oh, that's brilliant. Um, I have a really good eye doctor, optometrist, sorry. Now. Let's just grab our 40 micron, 40 micron, and continue along. And I'll have to just get into the studio tomorrow at 6 a.m., which I normally do anyway, and finish those other ones. There we go. We'll start back here. We'll start where we started. And so...
I'm going to get one more of those. One more. Just to kind of can see. See how my sides are looking. I'm going to give these edges a little love. What are these edges are looking good? Let me get this. That's good. Now we are not quite done, not quite done, but we're getting close. You can see it's nice and smooth, and we're just going to switch to some sanding papers. I've got sanding stick. We're going to come back to the edge here just like that. And I've got two, just like we had two kinds of sanding, we're going to start with a gray paper and then we'll do the blue paper and then we'll wash it and scrub it and fire polish it. And do this start with the big one and now's the time where you there's a dance you know sometimes you have to backtrack if you see if you're exposing any scratches, you may, and I can see a scratch right here. I don't know if you can see that. I can certainly see it. So I'm going to backtrack. It's a dance. See if I can take that out with this. Let's get, and then come forward again. Yeah, this is, you can't lie to yourself. If you see a scratch, you may not want to deal with it or backtrack, but trust me, your eye will fall on that scratch for the rest of your life if you don't take care of that scratch. No one else will notice the scratch, but you will know that it is there. And if you can live with that, you know, that's, that's you. I have laid awake at night thinking about certain scratches that I've left on my pieces or just imperfections that if I had just been bolder I could have taken care of so that is that well, first time chatter lucky orange art thank you you're very kind this is closing and enamel if you're just joining us this is so it's a melted glass all this is melted glass on fine silver and Backtrack because we've been working on these pieces for three days now. If you want to see how they were made, if you're just joining us, backtrack. I'm also exporting these to YouTube just in case because I think that Twitch saves things for maybe 10 days, 9 days. I don't know how many days, but they don't save them forever. So if you don't catch them...
see how it's just catching the light and the texture and I did have a question on YouTube somebody was like and I haven't answered it yet why why are you bothering with the and we'll talk about it at the end why are you bothering with the silver foil when you're already using silver isn't that kind of redundant and you know it's honestly just a matter of preference I a want a texture it would be I could do a scribed texture which is what I did for years um, but I like the texture of the silver foil and the silver foil is shiny it is just so reflective in a way that you cannot get you cannot get this level of shininess with I mean you could I mean I guess you know if you really spend a lot of time and a lot of people are really into that you know flashing of the silver I don't think that looks all that interesting to me so it's really for the sparkle for the sparkle there we go you can hang out over here got one more and then that will do the edges and where are we we're, we're almost up to temperature so oh we'll walk over to the sink we'll do the sink it's gonna be <laughs> they're gonna take a field trip to the sink oh I'm going to I got a little bit of scratches right in there see I'm gonna backtrack And here. There we go. Honestly. Yeah, it is. I don't think I've ever live streamed actually finishing anything. It's always just been here is some in between. You don't even know what we're going to end up with. So I should probably do more grinding and polishing. Endless hours. Okay, a little bit more. We're almost there. A little bit just right. This one's just being a little... That's better. Now let's do the edges before we move on to the last. I'm just going to take a moment and knock out these edges. It doesn't take, we've already kind of dealt with these edges when we were at the big grinder. So, but you know, a little extra love never hurt. Did you roll the print the, you can roll a texture and then fuse it. You even I feel like I'm a master fuser um you're a lot probably 50 50 you'll get a little bit of reticulation so you, you you might damage the the texture and it still won't be as shiny as a silver foil which so I think honestly it's just silver foil is so easy that but it's honestly you can just make you could even do an engraved texture just because the, it's the way I do something doesn't mean that it is a the correct way or b the only way so you can get i'm probably i'm not the only i think ricky frank uses a lot of foils as well um so you know everybody has a look that they're going for so those edges are done so we're done with that and we're going to just do one more we still have the blue i think it's 1200 grit last last one of these I heard clicky come up to temperature so I know a lot of my students want there to be one correct answer for everything like give me and I, I totally get it you're like there's a million ways to do things I just want the correct way and or the correct give me what colors should I be what red is there one red I should be using and I'm like well no not really <laughs> you should but I, you know, I get it when you're first starting out you want a path to success and 
if you take one of my classes, which are full, unfortunately, for 2023, that's why I'm not really, um, I'm not pushing them because my teaching schedule is full. I'm going to have to backtrack to the gray. Sorry, everybody. There's just these little tiny scratches in there. Uh, I think there's probably, you know, I'm teaching a class at Aramont School of Crafts and Design, which is in beautiful Gatlinburg, Tennessee, October 2023. Great, wonderful. It's my one of my favorite places. I taught there this past summer as well. So gorgeous, great equipment. You can stay in the studio all night long, enameling to your heart's content. We're going to do Chambre Levé and Cloisonne. So all, I think that, is, and I'm pretty sure there's probably some spots left. So Aramont School, and that's spelled A-R-R-O-W-M-O-N-T. October 2023, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, which is a unique unique town if you've never been to Gatlinburg it is a special place and they have bears so many bears black bears everywhere you have to be prepared to run into bears so if you have a problem with bears you may all right we're backtracking back to the blue sorry I had to you know even though I want to finish these. We need to have them be right. All right, so now we're back to blue. And honestly, the blue 1200 grit is where you're going to, it's the sink or swim, because that will reveal any very fine scratches. There we go. That's looking good. And don't think that this is, <laughs> we are doing the, we're gonna do a fire polish and then we're gonna continue on. And whether or not you want to continue on is a choice that you get to make with your piece. But I've kind of started doing this, a more extensive polish on all of my pieces. I used to just do an extensive polish on my larger pieces, but it's just, in my mind, it makes a big difference. I can totally tell, maybe you, you know, I don't know, my mom could tell the difference between the two finishes but I certainly can so I like to do with a few exceptions I tend to do a pretty intensive regimen that should be fine and I actually we're not going to do it today because I was thinking I've got some different kind of pumice pumice powders that I wanted to try out but today is not the day for experimentation so maybe I'll do that over Christmas break. So. Oh, hold on. It's no way. Pros and cons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I sorry, I'm not doing I'm, not, I'm I'm like, what are we what are we talking about? I'm gonna go in a mile a minute. So there we go, we're getting close. That's looking good. Looking pretty good. Let's just a little bit of edging here. Now it's also the time if you need to look at the backs of your pieces, if you have any weirdness, bubbles, trivet marks, you can, and I do this a lot, I'm not going to do it today, if you have anything that you need to address on the back, the fire polish is not the, you know, is a good time to do it. But it involves a leap of faith, which is firing, you doing your final fire polish upside down. Because you can fill in any little air bubbles or if there's trivet marks here, you can fill that in and clean it all up. Fire it upside down, you'll be golden. We're not going to do that today because we don't. it's not necessary. And it's only something that you can do with chambre levé, not just straight up cloisonné because it has that edge. 
So thankfully we don't have to do that today. But nothing will drip out unless you've done something terribly wrong. The enamel is not going to drip out of your piece. So there we go. All right, we are ready to do the fire polish, which is we're going to put these back in the kiln. And I did take a moment, I've cleaned my trivets during our little break this afternoon. I used, I didn't use this one, but I used uh, one that I have specifically for cleaning, cleaning trivets. I've cleaned them so there's no gloopity glop glass on them. And I need to wash these really well. So we're gonna go to the sink. Shall we go to the sink? I think we shall. All right, solo that. Let's go to the sink. We have not gone to the sink yet, but the sink, very exciting stuff. So we're going to use, let's see if you can see, see this, it's a natural bristle brush, it is not a fiberglass brush. And I'm just going to get a little Dawn, a little Dawn. Should probably do that. going to rinse them with some distilled. Distilled water. Perfect. Paper towel. Perfect. There we go. Just hang out. And now we're going to go over to the kiln. Fourteen thirty Fahrenheit, seven seventy six Celsius. There we go. Very exciting. We're going to let that the usual a minute and a half to two minutes you just want to make sure that everything is melted and shiny and then we're gonna to have to let them cool off and we're gonna go back to the big grinder and do a little bit more work so that is the plan we're in the home we're literally in the home stretch I think we're almost there. I think, unfortunately, I'll have to come in and finish the other three pairs of earrings, but it will be fine. 
let's just see and you can't hear it but when you put it in for the final fire it crackles a lot it's like because you can hear it's just because we've really done a lot of grinding so you hear all the crackling of the glass before it reheals and it can be it's not a great it's not a healthy sound you're like oh what is going on in there um, but things should be healing nicely if you pull it out and there's any unhealed fissures in it you know little cracky things you should put it right back in because we're trying to get it completely melted so i guess i'll wander over i'm sitting i'm just hanging out just chillaxing so let's go see let's go see where we are The weird colors. Look at how what the colors look like when they first come out of the kiln. Look how dark and weird they are. Let's see if we can zoom in. Look, it looks like black and brown. They will, the colors of the enamel when they cool will return to their original colors. It's always shocking to see the weird colors when they first come in because the, the green's looking brown, the blue's looking green, red looks black, you know, it's crazy town. And that we're gonna let them cool. I don't like to let them fuss. I'm not gonna fuss with them the way that I've been fussing with everything else. So you can hang out and look at that. I'm gonna go move the other camera over to the big grinding station. Yeah, not sure if you can actually hear, but you it should cool. You'll be able to see these come to the correct temperature. I'm going to move the other camera back over to the grinding station. So we'll be ready for the next step, which is we're going to, well, you know what? I'm not going to spoil the surprise. Let's, I do want to try something. Maybe I can do that. Oh, I do also need to get water, remember? Somebody needs to remind me to put water in the reservoir. So I'm gonna do that while that is happening. Oh yeah, see, look, they're coming back up to the correct colors. There we go. That should be enough water. do that. There we go. Now I'm going to, let's do this. While that is finishing cooling, I'm going to switch this. Remember, this is our rubber sanding wheel. Oh, I'm gonna, this one looks like it's seen better days, but we'll put that back on after. And I'm going to start with a 15 micron sanding belt. I'm not totally in love with these. They don't last. I feel like recently these little sanding papers, and they come in packs of five and they're not meant to last, you know, for a lot. But I'll 
so I don't know, bear to put on. There we go. So we've, that's a 15 micron. Don't ask me what 15 microns is. I'd have to look it up. Let me go see where our if our pieces are cool. Probably not quite yet because they're still sitting on that trivet. I swear half the battle is just waiting for things to cool down. So it's going to take one minute to cool it down. I'll go see if anyone's made any comments. See if you can see the, you know what, whatever. It is what it is. It will just, there we go. You can see a picture of me doing the thing, the whatever. Good enough. Now, I've got these two pieces and I'll show them to you here. They look beautiful. Look at how glossy and nice. The difference, you could totally, well, and we're going to throw these in the tumbler. You could just totally just throw these in the tumbler and call them done. Uh, they're, it's gorgeous. The color is lovely. But the one thing that I am going to be doing in this next step is every time you put something in the kiln, you know, the, the glass slumps ever so much between each thing. And so when I rub my finger along this, I can feel these individual wires because there's been a little settling with the glass. And so it honestly looks great, but you can see, and not so much with this, but some designs are a little bit more noticeable. It catches the light in a weird way because it's kind of pushing light in different directions. And so we're going to take care of that by going back. We're gonna do a 15 micron then we're gonna do a nine micron and then we're gonna do some pumice powder. So, pumice powder. And yeah, let's come a little closer. Is that better? I have no idea. There we go. This, don't need to look at the back of my head. So yeah, let's just do it. And, oh, I should have worn my, I don't have my bib, so I'm just gonna get wet. I'm gonna get wet little bit. I'll start with, yeah, we'll start with them. But I can already feel how much smoother it is. And you don't have to do this. You could use the smaller sanding discs for that, for this. They sell them in all these microns. If you don't have a giant grinder. It's a lot easier on the giant grinder though. Well, 
grab the edge one more time. All right, so that looks pretty good. A little bit more water, there we go. There we go, so that's the first thing. Now let me do this other pair. And so you can, this is actually, you can see how it's hard to kind of see the wires because the glass is over reflecting and you'll see the difference. We'll show you and I can feel these wires. This particular one will look so much better after this. But you can see how now all of the the light is reflected off a single direction and it really the design of I don't know if you can see it or not but I can see it and that's all that matters there we go see the edges there we go let's see if you can see the difference here maybe you can maybe you can't in this but see how this the one on the right whatever you can't see it in the thing but I can see it I'm not gonna justify it feels better I can feel it on my fingers almost oh almost it almost got away from me Ugh, that would have been sad if I'd cracked it it can go always you know you can wash it and put it back in the kiln but it's never fun it's not a fun thing to do all right that's good for the first that's looking good now we're going to turn the water off turn that off and we're going to switch to the nine micron disc sanding circle sanding what are they called belts belts they're called belts nine micron very very fine i've been looking for a better nine micron sanding belt because these do not last very long at all like almost one or two pieces and then i feel like it's just working plastic into my piece so i'm i'm on the lookout for a better product if you know a good nine micron six six inches three inches six by three inch let me know i bought one thought that, that i was gonna thought would work from rio but it did not so and yeah there we go nine microns let's do it What is that noise? Oh. Well, there's some sort of rattle. see how it's like starting to really pick up the shine. There is only one more step after. Well, actually there's two steps, but um, there we go. That's looking good. Look how it just really captures the light and it feels completely smooth. So, that's good. Let's get these little guys. Just, really 
nice. One more. Water off, uh, off, there we go. All right, so we're done with the big grinder. Let's see our pieces right here. And we're gonna go back to our original spot and we're gonna do a little pumice powder. That will be the last grinding, polishing step. Well, second to last, I know I said second to last. So I'm going to start by bringing this camera over Now, let's bring this. I need to find my bed. There we go. Going on an adventure. Here we are. Back to where we started. Oh, that is right there. There we go. Nice. You just hang out. Remember all of this. We have to do a little bit of oh, really gonna this. Um, if you ever find yourself, uh, you know, I have a love-hate relationship with this piece of equipment. Um, I would not buy it again. So, pumice, 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 pumice. I'm gonna get some fresh water. And pumice is a big, big mess. That's why I am going to put another tea towel. I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my bib back on in a moment. I'm gonna grab another tea towel, or maybe I'll just flip these around like this. There we go. And I'm gonna put down some paper towels to collect the pumice because you'll see what a mess. We're making a slurry, so it's nice to do this. Oh, hold on. Santa the enamel. Oop. Yes. Clear chat. Oh, I think when I threw my tea towel down, it hit my laptop and it cleared the chat like four times. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Just, we're in the home stretch, so... It don't matter. The chat, does anyone really want to go look at the chat again? Probably not, but yes. For non-moderators viewing this room, so sorry. But you know, the funny thing is if I try, if I thought, oh, I should clear the chat, I would have no idea, but apparently just throwing my tea towel on the laptop did that, so excellent we want some fresh water and I am going to be using distilled water it probably doesn't make any difference but the water here is gross so might as well use beautiful pure distilled water so If someone would say something in the chat room to make sure that everything is good, it would make me feel better, but I'm gonna move forward. So. That is, unless I kicked everybody out. All right, so, oh, let's also get the pumice. Pumice, pumice. Pumice. Got a whole, oh, it looks like I need to get some more pumice. We've got 
that. Let's get some super fine. All right, so. Oh, good, thank you. Sorry about, you know. I feel like I'm doing a little better with every stream, a little better, but there's always something that I'm like, what just happened? So I also, two things, I'm going to definitely be wearing my my res, my respirator, my particulate mask, I'm gonna be putting that on, and I'm gonna be wearing these dorky glasses to protect my reading glasses because I don't like this stuff flying into my eyeballs. And I'm gonna put my bib back on. So honestly, there's a whole lot to love here. <laughs> There's a whole lot. There we go. If someone would hand me a whole Maine lobster, I'd eat that. I'm ready for it. So I have, I wonder if I can use the rest of this. I've got a little bit of pumice powder in here. That's probably, I think that might be enough to do it. No. I use, we're going to use super fine and look, the scoop is included. We're going to open this new stuff. Um, and I just buy this on Amazon. You can buy it from any lapidary. I used to, when I first started, when I first started doing this process, I used cerium powder and I have since for so many reasons, we're not going to get into it. I think pumice is a far superior option and it comes in medium, coarse, fine, super fine. Um, I actually would have preferred to start with the fine, but they didn't have any. So we, we're going to just do the super fine and, and hope for the best. So let me open this. There we go. Beautiful. And it just be prepared for a bit of a mess. There we go. Now, I actually, I'm going to grab my scissors. I tend to kind of cut this this dumb container. It's, there we go. I like to just be able to scoop it out just like that. It's like we're going to be making biscuits. We're going to make biscuits. Delicious biscuits. So let me just get a nice scoop. Oh, there's already a scoop in there. Oh, we have an extra scoop now. Let's grab the scoop. And the scoop already has some pumice powder in it. That should probably be enough. Give it to me. There we go. There we go. That should be well more than enough than we need. There we go. And I'm going to get the put the pumice out of the way. I'm going to put it behind me so it doesn't spill everywhere. And so this is pumice powder. It comes like I say, it comes in lots of different grits. And I'm going to put my stuff on and we're going to make a slurry and oh, we also need to get um, Move that way over there so I don't tip it over. We're going to be using two. I know we're going to actually use two different felt buffs. I like to start with this firmer felt buff. Uh, I also, uh, because it's a slightly bigger piece, I've got. You can use a smaller one. I don't. I don't have it right in front of me, but you don't have to have this big size. I just was using this because I had a larger piece that I needed to get to more depth in it. So felt buff, a little bit firmer. This is a little less, is more poofy. I wonder if I should get a fresh one. We'll get a fresh. Oh, I also just got these. I wanted to try these felt buffs, but not today. We're not gonna try those felt, felt buffs. Ah. Honestly, there's so many different kinds, but I like the idea of a fresh felt buff. You know, look at how cute this is. It's like a little Pomeranian, <laughs> the little eyeballs on there. And then these are also, I use these a lot. So if you can't find, this isn't necessary. This one is just fine too. It honestly, it's whatever you want to do. And I'm going to get some water. We'll just, it's like making biscuits. Making a slurry. There we go. Let's see where we are with that. Yeah, and this is a dedicated container for this. And the fork, it does tend to settle really fast. So I keep the fork handy to keep the mixture 
ready to go. So that is our slurry. I'm gonna put on my glasses. There we go. And I'm gonna put on my respirator. I know this is the exciting bit. And where did I actually put the pieces of enamel? Oh, they're behind me, hold on, or in front of me. There we go. Here we are, they're right there. And last little thing is I need to do this. I know, don't need that. Like I say, we're gonna start with this one and I, yeah, don't ask me why I use the two. I'm still figuring it out myself, but I like it and it's working for me. So it's on my list when I have time to really, you know, fine tune my buffing because I'm feeling good about it, but you can always get better. So we'll start with the big one. And what I do see, see how it settles so fast. You gotta keep, keep agitating it. And I literally, we're gonna, it's gonna get messy. Get it nice in there. Probably should wear gloves, but whatever. go now that's done for that one let's get this one and let me mix this back up the slurry settles pretty fast Good.
That's good. We're almost done. Almost done. Great. Where did I put the other one? Oh, here it is. Now the last thing. Let's just go over there solo, really. That is fine. Now we're going to just do one last little buff. And where did I put my thing? Last little buff. I feel like this just gives it that last little, I don't know, je ne sais quoi. And we're going to be using this little guy. You can get these really sweet buffs from enamelartsupply.com. There we go. And we're just going to, let me stir this up again. See how it just completely, it settles fast. There we go. And we're just going to do one more little bit of it. Just sit here. Good enough. That's looking good. We'll get these two. Oh, oh, oh. Almost dropped it. <laughs> did not, did not drop it. All right, you know what? We're going to call that good eat enough. I'm going to go rinse and take all this nonsense off. Take my glasses off. We're done. Take this off. All right. Whew. And take off my bib. There we go. Now, let's... Let's do... This and this, a wrong way. How about this, this and this? There we go. Whew. So I'm gonna rinse these off. We've made a bit of a mess, but you can see we've got our pieces and they are all there. We got what I said, there's one more step. The step doesn't involve any labor on our part. It involves a tool, 
a machine. We're going to put, let me go ahead and let me just get this out of the way. Let me go down there. And then with this, I'm going to save this for tomorrow because I'm going to be using, I'm going to obviously going to have to finish those other earrings. So I'm just going to put a lid on this and reconstitute it tomorrow morning. So that will be fun. Made a little bit of a mess. And so we've got these little guys. And in fact, let me backwards. There we go. Oh, wrong one. This one, that one. There we go. So we've got these little guys. And I'm going to go get one more thing. And then we're not going to have to watch it, but we're pretty close. I decided against actually bringing the whole tumbler over. I'm just going to leave eyebrow. We're going to tumble these. And I only tumble chomlevé pieces because this is all just for this area. So you can see it's super glossy, but we want to get that lustrous shine back on the silver. So I tumble every single piece of chamlevé that you've ever seen has been in, if not this tumbler, a tumbler I had before. And I have two pounds of different size steel shot in here. Let me see the different sizes. There's, I think, three millimeter balls. There's a miscellaneous hobnob. They're all kind of round shapes and they are all stainless steel shot and there's a little bit of water just covering the shot and then a thimble full of sun sheen burnishing liquid or whatever that stuff is called and we're just going to quite literally put our pieces in there just like that we're going to do this doop 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 put it on like that. Where did I put the screw top? Didn't bring it over. It's probably sitting there, so it's fine. We're going to screw this in, and I am going to put this on my tumbler. It's going to tumble for 45 minutes, and we're not going to watch it. It's just, you're just going to have to trust it, and I will take a picture of it when it's done. Everything will be lovely, and nothing has ever broken or cracked in the tumbler. So if you pull something out of the tumbler and I've tumbled literally thousands of pieces. If you pull something out of the tumbler and it has a crack in it, it's because it had a crack or at least a hidden crack going in. So that is what I have to say about that. So we're going to tumble this. I know it's not a great time to end the video because there's nothing really beautiful to look at, but I'm going to call it a video. So let's, let me take a moment to Thank you guys for joining me on this Sunday for an extra, extra long, extra long. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for dinner. So if you are, let me just do a quick couple of shout outs. If you are interested in, oops, videos, my tutorial videos, I'm going, to, I do Vimeo videos. It is, and if you're thinking of a way that you'd like to subscribe to support me and you don't feel like dealing with all this Twitch stuff, please feel free to support my Vimeo channel. I do two videos, new videos every month, and we they tend to be project bases. We're going to be starting a new project in January, which is going to be all about opalescent enamels, opalescent enamels. This is going to be a big ass project and it's going to be very exciting, I promise. I'm going to learn a lot because I'm a little nervous about doing the opalescent. So that is something to be thinking about. Also, here is my Etsy store. Just in case you feel like shopping, you can definitely do that. Remember, that is where I sell things. Also on my website. So thank you so much. Have a great Christmas if that's what you do. Festivus for the rest of us. And I will see you on Christmas Day. 
not sure what time it'll be posted and we're going to make sample strips. So thank you so much and have a great rest of your week. Take care, everybody. Thanks. Bullet. Oh, your first time chat. Bullet Tooth Tony. Great name. Have a wonderful weekend.